<clears throat> it's called Thorn in My Side. The artist is Stephen Fishwick. And he created this piece in 2013. It's a acry acrylic on canvas uh, painting. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll talk, you know, I'll talk about the art, but I'll also talk about the frame because the frame in and of itself is a work of art as well. Um, so it measures uh, 36 inches by 48 inches here. And with the frame, it makes it about like five to six feet. So as you can see, it takes up an entire wall of my office here. Um, so the really cool thing about this piece is that Stephen Fishwick um, is a well-known Disney artist and he's been creating Disney artwork for quite a, um, a while. And when he first created this piece, he made a YouTube video from the concept to the initial thinking process to the finished piece. And it's a 17 minute video of, of him literally like from start to finish creating this piece. Um, I mean, he didn't do it in 17 minutes, obviously, but he takes you through the process of what he was talking about. And with this, hello, with this pin, um, I'm sorry, this pin, with this, <laughs> this, this artwork, um, it's supposed to capture is when Maleficent finds out that Prince Philip has escaped her castle she, you know, she declares, no, it cannot be. And she teleports instantly um, after, you know, creating uh, thorns around King Stephen's castle. So he wanted to create a piece that captured the entire movie sequence. And, you know, as you can see, Maleficent, so let's start with Maleficent here. Let's look at her face. I mean, gorgeous detail here. And as you can see, her transforming. So into the dragon, more into the dragon, major dragon. And he wanted to create the, the, the sort of, um, I guess, image of them focusing on him the entire time. So here, down here, then up here to down here. So, you know, Prince Philip is not the focus. I mean, it's Maleficent, of course, and it's obvious. And, you know, the, you can see that, so there's different, so it's acrylic on canvas and you can see that there's some splashing going on here that he does with his hands. There's also some, what we call this tile work. So those squares, you see those squares there? That sort of, you know, not only is it Maleficent scales, but it gives the illusion of the transformation, you know, of the movement of the piece. I, I just think, I mean, it's just when I, so I was not the original um, owner of this piece. Um, I found this, oop, here, let's get this, here we go. Um, so when I look for Disney fine art, uh, one of the places, you know, just to see what's available is on eBay. And um, hi, Neil, hello, hi everybody. Thank you for joining. So um, one of the, uh, so I got this piece from Richard Sponder and he's also a Disney art collector. And it, this, this was a piece that wasn't even listed. He just showed me kind of what he had. And he said that he was going to list it eventually. And I said, Oh my God, I love this one. So we made out a deal and, um, he, we, he had to call these different moving companies to create a custom made wooden box to ship this entire frame. The entire frame weighs about a hundred pounds. Uh, so it, I'm lucky it hasn't just fallen off the wall there with the hook up there. Okay, so now let's talk about the frame. This framing is made of hammered rod that's been torched. And as you, you know, and also you could see these, what we call these like um, these square nails or carpenter nails to give the appearance of thorns and the hammered rod curl to give the appearance of brambles and vines. And it, gives this overall organic look to the frame and that is exactly what they wanted to go for so really it's like two pieces of art two works of art in one um i will post the link to the video uh, later after the instagram uh live so you know we'll do that hello everybody thank you for joining so so there that's uh stephen fish's Fish Wishes art. So I will post the link to the whole video, which I think is just amazing to watch. So there's that. Now, 
Next to this are, um, you know, I just, just because we're right here, this is a shadow box made by Dave Avanzino. Right there, Dave Avanzino. And can you please go over the D23 Maleficent next? Uh, let's see, D20, oh yes, yes, I, I see in the background. Okay, yeah, I'll go over that. Um, but he, so I wanted to just show just because it's right next to it. So these are uh, unique shadow boxes made for uh, Club 33 members of Walt Disney World. Dave Avanzino is a very prolific artist. And uh, out of all the artists, um, I had the most pieces by him. And I've met him multiple times and he's such a great guy and he signs everything. And he, he just has his own, um, uh, his, his, you know, his own um, Instagram following. So you should t definitely take a look at him. And uh, each one of these, so there's a Club 33 house for every park at Walt Disney World. So we got one for Animal Kingdom, Magic Kingdom. And then on the other side of the room, we have one up there from Disney's Hollywood Studios. And then over there, we have one from Constellation Club. They're all of different um, LE sizes. This one over here is my most coveted one because it's LE 50. And, you know, they're sold out. I mean, so not all the members can get them. Spotlight Lounge. And then there's one Constellation Club right there. Yeah, so that's the Dave. And speaking of Dave Avanzino, before we get to the, um, the Maleficent D23, this is one that he created as well. Let me see if I get the light. So this is a fantastic piece. Um, it's limited edition of 25. And I, this is number two out of 25. And this is a mixed media piece um, that he made from uh, paper, from wood. It's very textured and three dimensional. It is paper art. Um, yes, I do love paper art too. Um, and it's it's a great rendition of Maleficent. It very much is reminiscent of Mark Davis's original creation of her with the her cape as the flames and in that iconic, you know, this is where she it almost seems like she's on top of the, you know, the turret, but she's not. But it, it's it's all and then again he signed the back of it, so it's just great. I really like this piece. Um, and then, okay, so somebody mentioned the D23 Maleficent. So that is this. This is just an amazing piece. I know there's a little bit of glare from the light here. Let me see if I can. There. Uh, okay. Hello, hello. Just nice to paint today. Uh, so no, no, I'm going to show a few other things, Bell Pin Trader, I, you know, I'll sh you know, as much as people want to see and as much time as we have here. Hello, hello, everybody. So this piece right here is, turn this away. so Brittany Lee created this piece. There we go. Brittany Lee created this piece and it is just gorgeous. And somebody did mention it is from D23 Expo. So this was awarded via um, RSP, a random selection process. And when I saw it, I knew I had to rank it number one on my RSP because it, it's just exquisite. I mean, I know there's the glare of the light here, but hopefully you guys can still appreciate the sort of 3D element to it. Let's see if we can turn this off. There. Okay. So it's also paper, but it's wood as well. And every detail is just so fine. I mean, Diablo to Maleficent. Yes, I know. I miss D23 too. <laughs> we had to wait till next year until we can line and line up and camp overnight. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this is great. And I was so lucky. I was able to meet uh, Brittany Lee at D23 and have her sign the back of this. And she's a, um, she's got quite a following on Instagram and she has an Etsy um, shop as well. Um, I can tag her on the post that I'll, post after the video so you guys can see but um she also had um a workshop at the time uh, that had to do with uh, women 
female representation within Disney art. And I thought that was very cool. I think that, you know, it's a very good thing to have. Um, I made this piece and prints were all sold out. Yeah, this, yeah. So there were, they were prints of this, but I, I, it's very beautiful. There's a, an Aurora version of this as well. So yeah, so there is this. Now um, I have this, um, I have the wall here. So why don't we go down here? I just want to show you this piece. This is actually a, so Chernobog is another character I collect. And this was a commission piece. I asked, um, I bought an original art from Rodel Gonzalez. And whenever you buy an original art from him, he draws, you know, a, a small, um, or he paints a character of your choice. And I chose Chernobog. And this is what he created. So this is kind of like um, a free art, basically, from one that I purchased before. Let's see here. So speaking of uh, paper art, um, somebody mentioned they were a fan. This is more paper art, and this is by Karen Aruda. That's Karen's unique signature there. Karen is another, um, she's a paper whisperer. So she, I mean, that's how, like, self-described. This is how she's able to... Um, create this paper art here and it's gorgeous as the evil queen good size and she dedicated the back to it as well hello everybody thank you for joining hello and then last i mean here this is another dave alvanzino totally customized he diablo pins one of a kind you know he he offers this, so, you know, he sometimes shows up, you know, before COVID, he was at Disney Anna or um, off the page and he creates your customized sort of shadow box, whatever you want it to look like or say. So in my case, Diablo pins and each, each uh, letter is a little artwork in and of itself. And so you can kind of customize based on what he has to offer. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. So I made one of Diablo pins and I thought to bring it to like, art shows and show people. All right, so, okay, so speaking of more Chernabog, and during this um, session, you know, ask me questions, um, uh, you know, anything you wanna know, like, are you, do you collect art? Um, how did you get into art? You know, just share with me your, your process, your way, or, or Ask me anything, really, of what you want to see. I have so much. Um, I'm in my home office right now. Yeah, so here, th so this Chernabog piece right here is of wood. It's made of wood. I don't know too much about this piece. Um, not even the artist, really, and there's not too much on the back to go off, but I credit uh, pin trader Joe Levine uh, for uh, gifting me this with a pin trade, a huge pin trade we did a while back. And he had this in storage um, and, and he, you know, it was just in storage, it wasn't hung up and he knew that I collected Chernobyl, so he went ahead and threw it as part of the pin trade. Um, so I felt very lucky, very happy about that. Um, hello everybody. And then let's go up here to see this Chernabog. Now this is pretty awesome. I mean, I, I really like this piece. Um, let's see. So this piece here is by Manuel Manny Gonzalez. Oh, I'm sorry, Hernandez. Oh my goodness, excuse me. So Manny Hernandez. And it's actually a printer's proof one of 10. You mean you make me want to get a she shed for art and pins? <laughs> um, so he created this pins or this uh, this frame, um, you know, this framed art of Chernabog. It is just fantastic. I mean, in in um, in art collecting, you know, unlike in pins. So basically, I'm a completist of these characters, right? So no matter what pin of Maleficent or Chernabog or Evil Queen comes out, I'll collect it. But in art, you know, definitely got to be more discerning. Um, you know, so, and this is one piece of Tremblog that I just loved. And I really have to credit my friend, uh, Shiny Squirrel Pins or Sarah Mellos to really help me get this pin because she had access to some art that I don't um, at the time, you know, early in my art collecting career. So that, th this is a great piece here. And then let's see, going up here, this piece was actually created at, um, the Wonder Ground 
Wonderground Gallery at uh, Downtown Disney. Am I saying that right, folks? The Wonderground Gallery? Yes, and it's by uh, Robinson. And it's an original. And Robinson created an original art piece of, of many villains and you know, all, you know, including Maleficent, but the old hag was my favorite, old hag and Chernobog. I just really liked his interpretation of the art. So as you could see, you know, he captured a lot, the skull, the raven, the magic mirror, the old hag with the apple. And I really just liked it, just the way that looks. Um, so do you collect originals or also prints? So, uh, yes, I, when I can, so when I can, I love to create uh, to collect originals like the one behind me, uh, by Brittany Lee. I think there's something really special about owning a piece that you know is one of a kind, and they are they tend to be larger than the prints, and of course they are more expensive. But again, you know, in a way, I consider it an investment, you know, in my artwork here, and you know. I mean, if you can get an original, great, you know, that's fine. But, you know, when I first started, I just, you know, there were certain lithographs or, um, you know, high edition merchandise that I would do. And then with time, I decided to just uh, focus on originals when I could. There's just something really special about it. So um, when I can, I collect the original. So, for example, I'll show you this one up here is an original by Costa Alavesos. And he, this is a pinch, pencil sketch of Maleficent with Diablo on her throne. And, and this, this is one that I saw and I, I knew it was an original. I was just browsing. I had no intention to buy anything that day. But um, uh, yes, I am going to save this and post it on Instagram TV in case you missed something earlier. No problem. You'll see the whole thing. So yeah, so, th so this is a piece that I, I bought the moment I saw it um, because it's original. It was, you know, re reasonably priced for an original. And I'm big FOMO. Like I have a big fear of missing out. Like if, if I don't get this now, then somebody else will. And it's one of a kind and I don't want to miss out. So I went ahead and got it. Um, so it's, it's really nice and, and it's a it's a pencil sketch as you can see there up the center her devious her devious glancing and there's Diablo looking on onto his mistress there onto her throne there's um there's something very charismatic about Maleficent and it's captured here so in addition so there is art but you know pins is what we know and pins can be art too and pins can be framed. So I'll show you this next piece. Here, this Fantasia piece. So this is a limited edition, 15 worldwide frame set commemorating the 75th anniversary of Fantasia. Look at that. It's a pretty big size frame and it's beautiful. This was um, released at D23, um, I believe, oh gosh. It was before, I mean, years ago. I mean, this is the 75th anniversary and we just celebrated the 80th. So it's about six, uh, eight years ago or so. And again, I got to credit Sarah, my, um, my friend for, you know, she got this for herself, but then later on decided she could part with it. Hello, hey, what's up? Hey, Chris. So and, and so this is the 75th anniversary, and I think there are 75 individual pins, uh, you know, creating this mosaic look to um, that tells the whole story of Fantasia. Pretty much all the characters are in there, including Chernobog. Look at that. I had to get it for, you know, because of him. Uh, and it's LE15 worldwide. So it's, it's beautiful and it's colorful and it's, it just is displayed beautifully in the, in the home office. Yeah, so that's, that's cool. Um, let's see here. Um, let me show you. So we, I just showed you Costa Alavesos did this one. Well, he also did this one, uh, the old hag. 
This was actually a commission piece. So he didn't, um, he created a much smaller version of this that was included with like two other pieces, you know, telling the story of Snow White, but I only liked the old hag part of it. So I asked him, could you make a larger version of just the old hag? And he did. And it, it you know, took several weeks, but it, eventually, you know, we got it and this is it. So very iconic moments where the old hag looks upon the poison apple. Uh, on the face, a symbol of what lies within, or on the skin, a symbol of what lies within. There's that. And then, you know, I like symmetry, and I showed you that Robinson did, did the old hag here. Well, on the other side of the room up here, here's the Chernobog version. So this is, again, by Robinson, and he created this at the Wonderground Gallery. Uh, downtown Disney it's an original piece I just really like the way that old Hagen Chernobyl came out in his interpretation of the villains so I have those now let's come down to here and look at this one I think several, I think this got so many likes on my Diablo pins more so than so many other um, like art pieces that I, I I put up this is by George Kalsudis and it is a uh, limited edition. It's number 13 of 15 printers proof. And it showcases Maleficent, of course, with Diablo. But one thing that's so cool about it is not only the, the colors, but also just look at everyone's expression. Look at that. I mean, they're either scared, contempt, fear, terrified, anxious, <laughs> I mean, it just really goes to show the, uh, for me, it just shows the, the, the power and presence of Maleficent. And I think it's beautifully captured. And the framing, I, I really have to, um, the framing is just, I, I take it to a professional framer, Sherman Galleries here in the Marina del Rey, and they just do an excellent job. The stylist, um, you know, take a look at the colors and they match the matting and the framing just to make it just really stand out. Uh, so that that's a that's just a great piece, and there's a pin that was just recently released as well, by Artland Galleries, that uh, is based on this artwork. Let's come down here. So we saw Maleficent. This is Maleficent in um, her dragon form. This is more paper art. This is by Elizabeth Treat. It's an older piece, made in 1999 April, and it is. Uh, limited edition of 10 and there's only six made really oh, i'm sorry there's 10 made and i have uh edition six of it so this is a pretty cool piece i just think just because of, you know it's my character it's such a low edition size um eric Kai vault or david lipscomb really helped um he had this in his uh sort of vault and he was able to sell it to me so i'm very grateful for that hello everybody joining in and then this is a little small piece of Maleficent here by Lee Shan. He um, is not an official Disney artist, but he did. Um, he is a professional artist and he interprets these characters very well. And I got this from um, uh, Lenny, actually, and, uh, and because his wife, Lisa, is friends with Lee Shan and they produce a few pieces and I got some from them. Uh, See, I'm trying to get make sure the glare is out of here. This is another Chernobog piece here by Smith. I think it's John Smith. And uh, I also I did get this piece um, from from Disneyana. And for symmetry, I got Maleficent over here on the other side. There we go. You don't want to see my reflection there. There you go. There's that. Okay. Hello. Hey, Joyce Collectibles. Thanks for joining in. We're just showing off the collection here. So I believe that is it for the home office. And then I guess there's this last one up here. Trevor Carlton is another prolific Disney artist and he um, created this piece. This is an older piece. This is a uh, limited edition of 7,500. Even before I got into pins and 
pin trading years ago, back in early 2000, I mean, early 2000s, my friends from college got me this um, artwork because they knew I liked Maleficent, um, even before I started to become a crazy collector. So I, this holds a special place in my heart. Um, so this is uh, by Trevor Carlton, Ali 7500, and it's number 287, I think. There's that. Okay, so, all right. Does anybody have any questions or anything? I can move on. Um, since I'm in the house, I can show you uh, a little bit more of what I have in the house. This is just the home office, but there's some stuff in the living room and in the kitchen area if you'd like. Is this the man cave? <laughs> Not yet, no, that's out in the studio. Um, oh gosh, there's just so much to see. And I can, uh, I can, I, I, I will continue. It's you know, only 30 minutes into it. So I can show you a little bit more. Um, would you guys like to see a little bit more? Here, let's go ahead and uh, move back. Let's... Okay, here. Yeah, so Matt, Disney pins, will this be posted later on your page? I missed this room completely. Yes, it will be posted. I'll... I'll uh, save it and I'll upload it as an Instagram TV video so you can see it. So yes, um, definitely. Okay, so we will continue on and let's let's look at this piece here. Who can tell me, who do you think is the artist of this piece? I'll wait till you guys respond. Chernabog? Who is the artist of this piece? Does anybody recognize this piece? Does it resemble a pin? Gomes, yes. So Chris, Hendizi, yes, that's right. So Elizabeth Gomes. So I, you know, many pin traders know of the Gomes pin. So they're very valuable. They're um, Disney auction, some Disney shopping. Um, and she she created a lot of other types of collectible merchandise in addition to the pins. So one of them was a charger. Oh, oh, oh wow, Chris. So Chris and he's, he's a, Chris is a pin designer and he's a part of the chat and he said he made the pin. So that's amazing. Um, so he, but in, so at Gomes, this is um, it's a limited edition of 10, and I believe it's numbered one of 10. And I really have to thank Dan Marcheski years ago, back in, I think, uh, 2015, when I first got this piece here. And it's uh, held up by just a standard frame here. But it's beautiful, and it's in the living room. So it's one of the first things that people see when they walk into the front door here. You know, there's that. You see to the left, right here, boom. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, and now this next piece I'm gonna show you guys, I mean, I could spend a whole hour talking about, it be, and it's probably one of the most amazing pieces in the collection. It's this one right here. Boom, when you, right when you walk into the house, it's the first thing you see is this piece, taking up an entire wall in the living room. So this piece is called Cast by Spell. It's an actual photograph and this is a real live person, a human being. It isn't a painting, it's photographic art. And the artist is Franz Zoni. And this guy is a creative genius. He's legit. I mean, his stuff has appeared in Vogue. Um, and the short story of this is that he reached out to me on um, Instagram. And he wanted to me to help him produce this piece that he created. Um, and he knew that I really liked Maleficent and I didn't even know what the piece looked like. So, you know, after a meeting or so, he showed me the image and my first impression was like, wow, this is a great piece. I mean, it captures so much. I was a little leery because it wasn't, you know, like um, it, it was like kind of like real life, like live action. And I... You know, I don't have any live action art, but this one does it. So this has everything. So this is, this is actually a taxidermist um, raven. The model for Maleficent is Devin Green, who is this uh, comedic chanteuse, who is like a, a, like a celebrity, bona fide. Um, Franz created the, her gown dress out of silk. The green 
are from military grade smoke bombs. The Los Angeles Fire Department was involved with <laughs> having to clear the use of these smoke bombs. There's Franz's um, signature right there. And, it's, and also this is an artist proof version, one of one. So this thing is huge. It's like 48 by 60 inches. And the original, which I believe is still for sale, is a, lit, a bit larger. I think it's 62 inches by 48. Um, hello, hi Jonathan, thanks for joining. Thank you everybody. So yeah, this piece is just, I mean, it, it's the first thing that people see when they come into the house. And in a way, you know, I, I it was my husband Brad's idea to put it here. Um, and Brad, my husband, his hobby is sailing. So we had a beautiful sailing piece here, but we had to, you know, take it down and make room for this. And, you know, it really touched me because it shows me that, you know, he's supportive of the art and he approves. And, and you know, in a way, I mean, I don't know, when people come in, they're like, oh my gosh, what is this? You know, it isn't quite the most welcoming image, but hey, <laughs> Joey, if it's Patrick, you know it's artist proof. That's right. <laughs> you know, there's, there's that special quality about it. Um, so yeah, so this is just a great piece um, that I just love and I, I highly suggest that everybody check out Franzoni's work um, because his work is just amazing and he, he has been signed on by uh, Disney to create more pieces but because of COVID and other issues, um, it, it, it just takes a long time. Disney takes a long time to do everything, so, but it's worth the wait. All right, so we'll move on. I want to, this is... Hey Jones, say hi to everybody. Hi Jones. Well, I think I interrupted his sleep, sorry. <laughs> That's our cat Jones. All right, so here, now Rodel Gonzalez was the one who did one of the Chernobog pieces in my office, uh, you know, included. This is another one that he did. The old hag, classic scene where she offers, you know, Snow White, it's, it's apples that make the men's mouth water, right? So, and it's such a kind of like, he gives this, I mean, look at the skin, the color, you know, what, so if any of you have visited Walt Disney World or who stayed at the Boardwalk, the resort in Epcot, there is a gallery on, in the Boardwalk called Wyland Galleries. And, um, you know, they sell a lot of Disney art, a lot of original art. And Joshua Siegel is my art consultant there. And he, you know, he sends all of us, um, you know, all of his clients emails, updates about what the artists are up to. So he, this was in one of his emails. I said, oh my God, I got, you know, what's this one? You know, how, how much is it? Is it available? And so he said it is. And so I went ahead and snatched it. You know, it's not FOMO in me, you know, if you're missing out. <laughs> um, it's beautiful. It's an original art piece. And, you know, he, the framing was done by him and they ship it out. So it's in the kitchen, you know, it's next to the wine rack. It's, you know, we have, you know, our, our bar here and, you know, the kitchen's over here. And th there's, <laughs> even though it's a poison apple, it's still food, right? I mean, those, po those apples aren't poison. I mean, I think it's appropriate to have it in the kitchen. And Red's supposed to conjure up images of like, um, you know, food and, and, and hunger and all that. So I thought it'd be great to um, include it in the kitchen. So there's that piece there. Um, let's see, where else? Let's come over here. So here I have a lamp of Trinibog. Look at that. This is a lamp that was created by Kevin Kidney. I believe he signed the back side of it. It's hard to visualize here, but it's this exquisite lamp. And I have to plug in, let's see. I want to show you guys what it looks like lit up. Okay, here we go. There we go. Thank you. Uh, Bellini and Falcon, thank you. Thank you everybody for joining. I'm just showing off a little bit of the art here. So this is Chernobog and his lit up glory here. So, and it toggles. So you could turn just the bottom, you can turn just his eyes, or you can turn on both. 
It's an awesome lamp. And at night, it just looks so wicked. So I'll just leave it on just for show for now. Yeah, I know. The light really gives it a nice look to it. <clears throat> so right next to Chernobog is a Murano glass sculpture of Maleficent Dragon titled Drogo. Th now, there's quite a story behind this one. Um, I... You know, I, in my profession, I'm a dermatologist and I go to these educational conferences and one of them was in Italy. And, you know, I took my mom and Brad, you know, just as a you know trip to ch go to Italy. And there's um, the, the conference was in Venice, Italy. And across the way is an island called Murano. And Murano is um, very well known for creating this sort this world class uh, glass art. And we got out the boat. And we took, you know, went into the gallery and for some reason the guys, you know, went inside the gallery, pulled us to the side and said, hey, you know, why don't you take a look at some of our spe extra nice special stuff that we usually don't show the tourists. And they took us to this upstairs area that had all this gorgeous sort of glass art of made of all these things. I mean, and I just exquisite. And of course, you know, the collector and we was thinking gosh I wonder if they have anything that's like Disney related Maleficent and they said they do commission so when I sent them an image of what I would have what it like they instantly recognized it was Maleficent so they went ahead and got to work on it and I you know put down a, a down payment and it took them a few months and several broken Maleficent frames um or pieces but they finally did it and it is just ex exquisite and it weighs a lot and it shipped all the way from Italy. And this is, you know, one of my most prized possessions here. It's just beautiful. There is that. Okay. And then let's try about one more time. All right. Okay, so it's about 40. So Think, I don't think it's raining outside, so I'm gonna go ahead and just walk out to the studio area for you to see a few um, a few of the pieces there. The man cave. Let's see here. So this is our back patio patio area. This is Shammy sleeping. You don't want to disturb her. But let's go into the man cave. Here we go. And let me just, let's let there be light. All right, so there's there's a lot to see in here and I think I'm just going to I'll just show you guys kind of what what we have. I'll start on this wall here. Um original art piece, Disneyana. Kurt Raymond, Snow White, Scary Adventure, A Frightened Witch. I really like this piece because it kind of turns the table. So instead of Snow White being freaked out and scared in the forest, it's the old hag. Sort of like her own nightmare. I thought it's just it was just a cool piece and I just had to get it um, when I saw it. And here, so hook pins. Hook pins uh, made this series of pins based on the Art Nouveau Disney auction series of uh, Dragon Maleficent. And I w decided to frame it uh, kind of like the, the, pr the progression frames. Embryo, Colorina, Sewing, Plating, and Print. So there's that. I just love this piece. This is a Jeff Granito piece. It's completely original, uninvited guest. Uh, again, I won it through RSP uh, at D23. Um, yeah, I was lucky to be a sorcerer ticket that year. And it's just beautiful. I, it's so colorful and it's um, it's an, a color variant. So all the, the production, this is Jeff Granito. Yeah, the production run of this had different colors in it. The original is completely original. And down here we have uh, uh, the WGI pin celebrating the 60th anniversary of Sleeping Beauty. And it's the artist proof, of course, framed. 
there's that. Okay, and then let's come up here. So this is when Acme created their pin. So a limited edition art and pin, Dragon Skate by Guy Vasilovich. And not only did, you know, was the, the pin was based off the artwork and this is the artwork. And it's uh, number 49 of 150. And it, it's just, it's great. It's just, I mean, Maleficent dominates this. <clears throat> and when Acme started to release their pins, they would release, there's the gold version, and then later they would release a platinum version. And I decided to kind of capture all of it in one large shadow box frame piece that included the art plus the pins. So um, I just hung this up yesterday in preparation for this video. Hello, hey Leo. So, uh, so yeah, so it took a lot of sweat yesterday to, to get this up but um but here it is so there's that and then uh more paper art by karen aruda this is a great piece i have to thank luke Demello, cast member at walt disney world for help, helping me get this it's a maleficent piece with the flames um karen's signature stamp more paper art is that and then another progression frame the old hag number one of 15 i got this myself at d23 as a sorcerer i ran into the store i saw that there were some frame sets and i ran over and i asked which ones do you have which characters and I, so give me the one of the old hag and boom got it so just hey it's just be lucky <laughs> distract Leo. where's the Haiti stuff i mean he's the king of the underworld <laughs> yeah they may be but we love our Maleficent, Evil Queen, Chernobog, Old Hag. No, no, Hades is great. I like, you know, he, he's a fun character. A Beautiful Evil Queen piece. This is by um, Gil Yakovetic. You know, at first glance, you see, okay, this is, you know, almost like a realistic, like, live version of the Evil Queen. But if you look closely, it encompasses every element of the movie. So you see the peacock throne, but within, within the peacock feathers, you see the dwarves. I don't know if you can, yeah, so they're very subtle. There you go. There's uh, Dopey. And then if you look here, you see the poison apple within her, her jewel, you know, the garment. And look at that. Do you see the old hag right in there? And then you also see the vultures come down. Snow White in the heart. The heartless box. And then Spirit, the magic mirror. So it, it pretty much includes, I mean, it's like everything. I mean, he really managed to incorporate everything in this one piece. And it's number one. Sorry about that. And it's number one of the 95 right there. This is a piece by Lee Shan again. Um, I just love this piece. It's just dripping with delicious evil. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wanted it to have special framing. So, I, you know, again, I took it to Sherman Galleries and they helped me do the red mat. Um, or I'm sorry, the red frame here and this uh, special black frame. So I really, I just love the way that that piece looks. It's one of, one of my favorites um, by him. And, oh. and then here, let's, we all know. So pins can be art too, and they can be framed art. So this is um, the three of three 40 pin series Disney villains. I managed to get this um, on my own in hand. I was very lucky. Um, the, you, you know, when I, when, I came, when I went into Mickey's of Glendale during that specific D23 Expo, I just saw at the corner of my eye that there were frame pin sets way in the distance. So I, the, the moment I saw that, I just, 
ran over there really. And I was so lucky because I managed to get, I think the last um, frame, there was only three of these frames and the first two were already gone. I think I got the last one. Um, and it, it's just pure, ch there's Hades, there you go, Leo. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, so I was just felt, and, you know, even though I, I mean, it's an artist proof set and, you know, it has all the characters that I collect and, but it also has all the villain. I mean, this is such a, a, a unique frame and the profiles, as we all know, are, um, you know, they, they're, they're highly valued and they're popular in the pin trading community. So I just decided to keep it intact. And as far as I know, I think the other two frames are intact as well. Yeah, so it's a beautiful frame set. Here we have a beautiful vase by Maleficent. And up here we have, so here we have a little snow globe given to me by my best friends. Uh, from college years and years ago. Uh, this is like 15, 20 years old, the snow globe. And here is, so the masquerade. Let's see if we can get that without the glare. It's the Midnight Masquerade series, the Maleficent. The doll. And then this is the Evil Queen version. And in between the two is the old hag. Not part of the same series, but this was also released at a D23 Expo, and I thank Juan Hernandez from Disney King Pins for helping me get this. And this is a little piece here. This is uh, uh, Josh Whitbeck. You know, I don't think he's too active in pin trading anymore, but he uh, he helped, or he you know decided to gift me this. This is a very cool piece of um, lapis, and it actually moves to so you could store stuff in it. So there's that. And on this side of the wall, we have the framed artist proof of this Evil Queen pin. Got that from Corey H. Pie Wolf. Do y'all recognize this pin? The LE50 Bad News Super Jumbo framed pin. You know, pretty valuable, hard to come by. It was released at the um, pin celebration to search for imagination 19 years ago, 2002. I went ahead and reframed it, you know, just because the frame that originally came in was, I mean, it, they're not, they're pretty flimsy and they can break easily. So I decided to get it reframed. Um, I also do run Disney races, so I have my medals framed, and this is another Lee Shan piece here. Um, yeah, let's get that. There we go. Of Maleficent, so that fits. So I got to be really um, careful about my wall space because I'm pretty much out of all everything. So when I first got into pin trading, I had just missed the Reflections of Evil pin event. Um, and that would have been perfect for me because I, I'm all about villains and, you know, it, that event was all about villains and, uh, and I loved all the pins. So it was a, this, this frame set is LE 13, I believe. Um, and only, you know, as you could see, so there's the, each villain is featured as a pin, but only the evil queen pin had the backer magic mirror frame when it was produced. But as you could see, the other pins had the magic mirror frame too, and only included as part of the frame set. So that's what makes this pretty unique, you know, cause every pin has the backer magic mirror, which is only part of the frame. So, so how, how do you decide which room each art goes to or wall? It, it's like a puzzle. I mean, depending on the size and how much space I have, it goes there. Or if I have to rearrange stuff to make it fit or to look aesthetic, that, that's what I'll do. I, in general, I tend to have the art that I love the most in the home, in office. Um, and then, you know, the art that 
I mean, I don't have room for in there. I just got to put in the studio here. This is uh, by Trevor Mazak. Very textured uh, piece here, or the or at least the paint. It's black and white, except for Evil Queen's lips. The magic mirror right there. Let's see. Who else can we... So I'll just give you an overview of the wall again. There we go. And let's come over here. So this is another framed um, pin set, The Villainous Voyage. That would have been a lot of fun to go on. Disney Cruise Line featuring villains. LE50 has Chernabog, of course, and the old hag. So two of the characters I collect. Yes, yeah, Charlie, yeah, I need... There we go. Yeah, so, and I, you know, Alex Maher is the artist for this, and I've met him multiple times, and he's a great guy, and it's very interesting to hear from their perspective what goes into making a pin. Um, let's see here, let's see if we can shed some light here. This is a doll, um, a Maleficent doll that I got from Josh Widbeck back when. I really like this doll. I think it's my favorite Maleficent doll just because it just looks so much like her. You know, like how she really appears. And here, I'll move this to show you this piece by Dave Alvanzino. So this piece is not original. It's I think it's number five of 195. But... Um, it's still a great piece. And look at her shadow. It's of the dragon. Transformative dragon. So I like that. And then um, down here we have a graded version of the Maleficent Diva pin. So you have that. It's uh, got that from Lenny. Got some old hag pieces here. And then there's this, uh, I think this is an LE50 frame set from the Reflections of Evil event as well. So it has the different, you know, almost like a progression process, the different pins. Now I, you know, so all these artists have their, you know, in, own interpretive um, way of, of creating these art pieces. And so there was one guy I saw on Instagram who his art is just, it's just striking. And he's not a Disney artist. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Can, can you guys see that? Yeah. This is probably the freakiest, scariest piece I have in my collection. It features Chernabog, Maleficent Dragon, Old Hag with the scythe, uh, the Crow Raven, and then a Maleficent's Castle in the background. So... You know, his art is very dark, um, it's creepy, and it's very visceral. And I really wanted to see what his interpret. And he's created some Disney characters already based on this, his interpretation. Like he has Mickey looking like some crazy zombie and, you know, uh, uh, and Minnie the same way with, with like sharp fangs and teeth. <laughs> you know, it, we're, we're used to seeing our Disney characters looking very cute, you know, even some of the villains. But... I really wanted to see what he could do. He's a French artist and, you know, so I, I, you know, sent him a message on Instagram and I told him, can you make a piece of these three characters? And I felt that, um, you know, these three would fit his style most and he loved it and he thought it was a great idea. So he went ahead and created this piece for me and I had it framed. And yeah, I know it's very different from some of the other stuff I have, but I, I really, dig the uh the old hag version the maleficent the chernobog is just crazy scary so they're those pieces so moving on uh here let's there we go look at that so again we have more elizabeth gomes charger pieces this one definitely is reminiscent of the actual pin itself This is the Dragon Gomes. It looks a bit different than the pin. This is a one of a kind charger plate. I don't, I don't think there was a production one made of this. Uh, and then we have this one up here. 
the old hag and snow white there are other ones too other charger plates and you know obviously i'm not the only collector out there so they you know they some of some of them belong in other people's collections let's see here and this i found this very affordably on ebay it's an original art piece done in 1996 chernabog I think the actual art itself I got for like 30 bucks, um, but I loved it because it was original and it's a Chernabog. This is another Dave Avanzino piece. Limited edition of uh, 25. Sprite of Spring, yes. And, you know, I had to commemorate, you know, Club 33 in a way. So there is the pin and there's some artwork that all club members received and I had it framed. There's that. Coming up here, we have another doll, Evil Queen doll here. And let's see, up here we have some Star Wars characters from my birthday cake a while ago. Um, decided to keep them. Here we have the, the Horn King progression frame set. It's number one at 15. Kirk Favreau helped me get this. That's nice. And then we have another, um, oh gosh, I can't see the artist's name, but this is really cool. The old hag with the apple. Something I got at Wonderground Gallery a while ago. So there you have it. I think you, you guys have seen a lot of it. I mean, I can, um, it's been about, it's about like an hour now. I have more artwork um, in my home or my, my actual office, my work office. And I'd love to do another live video at some point showing you the artwork there because I mean, it, my coworkers know that everyone knows that I'm, I'm a Disney geek, right? So in my office is decorated different Disney stuff, the Star Wars marathon stuff. So I'm gonna have to show you guys that uh, another time I and I have two offices too I have one in I work in Whittier and La Mirada and in each office I have uh some artwork and, and some of that artwork includes original artwork as well um so you know does anyone oh I forgot to show you this one too gosh this is uh hold on let me just turn this around here there we go. This is a really cool piece. I was at the Wonderground Gallery for quite a while, for many years, and then Sarah helped me get it because it was being auctioned away or gonna be sold off somewhere else. So she managed to get it and I went ahead and bought it from her. Brittany Brault made this piece. <clears throat> pure, literally pure standing paper uh, art. Yeah, so there's that. So yeah, so I, I wanna thank everybody for tuning in, um, you know, what an hour. Uh, managed to get through most of the artwork that I have at home. So, uh, you know, here, this is a shirt that I got from Festival of the Arts, which is happening right now, and I would love to go visit. I think one of the cool things is to see the artists, to, to, to meet the artist and to see them and um, and, you know, because there's a human being behind all this art and it's great to just talk to them and to share your enthusiasm and passion for Disney and for collecting. Um, yes, th thank you, Neil. Thank you for, for joining in. Thank you, Classic Disney Pins. So it, I will post uh, another uh, announcement for a live session. I got so much to share. Uh, I would love to share with you uh, my complete Maleficent collection, uh, my complete Trinobog Old Hag collection. I have many different uh, artist proof pin sets, prototypes, one of a kind pins. And another exciting thing, another announcement that I'll make and I'll probably reveal in a live session is a few grails that I'm expecting in the mail pretty soon. One for my collection, but the other two will be up for, for sale most likely. Uh, but Yes, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, and at some point, I think I will have some live sales of, of my traders or, you know, a pins that I'm willing to sell for you guys. 
So I'll be announcing that as well. Um, and I appreciate any sort of feedback you guys have about uh, my live sessions, anything that I can improve upon or anything that you want to see, uh, any sort of content, I'd be happy to make it. And uh, so thank you again for everybody who tuned in and I will be posting this as an Instagram TV in case you missed any part of it. That way you can see the whole thing and you know, um, when we started in the house, okay? So have a happy Monday. Thank you, thank you so much for everybody who tuned in and I will see you again very soon. Take care. Let's see here.